Hey folks, Ryan here from Mr. Rouse Gaming Brands and Reviews, and I've got a good old review today, and it's a little topic that I know quite a bit about. I'm going to talk about a two-player only game, and I'm going to be taking a look at Sobek Two Players, designed by Bruno Cathala and Sebastian Pochon, published by Pandasaurus Games. You know, a new temple to the god Sobek is being constructed, and there is a wealth of opportunity of a whole of a couple rivaling merchants in the area. You're one of those merchants, your other opponent is the rival merchant, and you're gonna try to collect and sell the most goods by trying to be the least corrupt at the same time. Because if you got the least, if you're the least corrupt, you know, Sobek is going to reward you heftily. So Join me at the table. I'm going to show you what's inside the box and how to play Sobek two players. Okay, well, let's take a look at what's inside a copy of Sobek two players. I'm just going to slide the box on open over here. Okay, so we've got our rule book, which is, you know, pretty okay. Standard little two player game rule book fits nicely inside the box and whatnot. Uh, goes over your components really, really quite nicely, pretty clearly. The setup, filling the market. You know, it does a pretty darn good job explaining how to play the game. Uh, you know, take how to how to take your turn, what you can do on your turn. Um, lots of diagrams, lots of examples. No wasted space in here. Everything is all very functional. Everything is pretty good. Um, I had no problems knowing exactly what to do in this game after reading this rule book. There, there were a couple things that I had um, missed along the way, but you know, uh, clarified on the second on the second playthrough definitely because. Um, uh, we, I, I missed the, I missed this rule about taking a goods tile with the Debden token. Um, <laughs> we thought you still kept the tile, and you also got the uh, uh, the Debden token. Um, when actually it's one, you get one or the other. Keep the tile or discard the tile for the token. So that's one thing. <laughs> uh, right here, it, where actually it says the note on on what on what to do, and there's even an example here. So um, the, something that that was just that was a me uh, thing. So going on here yeah i'm playing a character the peak tokens um this was a little bit uh confusing uh, at first but after we played a couple games of it it kind of made a lot of sense because we kind of you know got to that end of game on how when does the game like actually end and it's uh at the start of your turn you, ha you have to meet like all of these conditions so if you can still do one of these things these conditions the game actually does not end you can still do one of these pieces and what as soon as it gets to your turn and you can't do one of these four things that's when the game ends um the corruption count okay um you have to i actually have to keep this uh, pay page really really quite handy um, when the game end does occur because there's a little bit of things here to do it's not really quite 100 percent straightforward only if you've played this game a few times and then the final scoring is actually really straightforward here and i'll hopefully get to that in the how to play video so overall i have no problems with this nice little rule book the only thing that you're going to want to keep handy is when the game does end you're going to want to keep this end of game um, sheet really handy just to kind of remind you when does it actually end and then what is actually happening at the end of the game but i have no problems with that rule book that rule book is actually pretty um decent and I, and I learned this game straight from reading the rule book i didn't actually watch a how to play video on this one um at all Okay, and I've got my box sorted into a whole bunch of different components here. Um, I got my baggie of kind of like all of our start of all of our starting things. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of just push this aside. I'm going to open this up. So there are um, a bunch of starting tiles. They, they are depicted with these gray, with the gray back here and everything. These are going to get shuffled and each player is going to get two of them. And then four other ones are going to get randomly placed at the... Um, in the middle of the table in the middle of the board and there's going to be i think there's oh I, i'm missing one there's going to be two that don't get actually used um 
type thing. And uh, the artwork on this game is actually, if you can't tell, um, is very actually lovely and charming. It's very colorful, very bright. It's actually very engaging. It kind of makes you want to kind of check this thing out. And the same um, transfers into the tiles. Like the, the very like cartoony ish style of depiction of the goods is really nice and refreshing um, rather than just kind of like some of the old bland type of things so, and then there's and then, then this one too so I really actually do enjoy the cartoony art of the goods it, the the who, who um, oh, I'll have to look it up here um, but the illustration on this game top notch really 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 enjoy it uh, we got our corruption boards, which one player is going to eat. And this is just kind of like a, a, pl a placeholder for where you're going to stack some tiles um, when you gain corruption. And those are kind of nice. Kind of way to maybe wish there was kind of like one for each. Like they both weren't the same. It's a two player game. So maybe one, maybe they, they could have had like one in the reverse color type thing. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm nitpicking at that point. There is the Onk token here and it's got the arrows because that's going to be very important in the how to play version in a uh, portion of this video and then there's two score trackers okay they both look at exactly the same and then there's a 50 on the other side for when you score more than 50 points okay so those are all of the starting component I, I i call them the starting components and i got i placed them all into like just one little baggie here um, then we've got our other tokens here, which are the there's a couple there's a couple different things here. We got the, the 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 peak tokens. There's a whole bunch of them, a whole bunch of them, and these peak tokens they have a whole bunch of wide variety of effects on the back. I believe there's two of each. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. Yeah, there's there, there's there's twelve of them. There's six different kinds. And there's multiple versions like this one. There's there's two of these ones, and they kind of get randomly shuffled here. And then five of them, only five of them, are actually going to be in the actual game. So there's actually quite a bit of variety in when you get these um, for for these particular tokens. And then there's the Debon tokens. Oh, there's another peak token that I forgot. And these ones all get randomly shuffled face down. Actually, I think the actual rules say to place them inside the baggie. To, to shuffle them around we kind of just shuffle them face down here and put them in that in a nice stack i think that does the exact same thing for randomness type thing because i like to keep my tiles for the rest of the game i like to keep the tiles in this bag and yes you can if i own i'm going to open it up here and there's going to be a wide there's a big wide variety of tiles inside of this that's going to be used to fill up the the player board now the reason why i keep them in the baggie is because some tile most tiles will be kind of like the back this will be the back of them okay and they depict the goods on them and the various things and everything but then there's also in this stack is also the character tiles which they have chosen to do a different back but these tiles are actually supposed to be shuffled amongst these other good styles and the way the rules explain is that you're supposed to shuffle them in with these and making them a stack. Now the problem with that is though, I know which ones these are. Okay, <laughs> they they have a they 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 kind of stick out like a sore thumb amongst the rest of these. So that's why I'm choosing to use the baggie that is draw, the drawstring bag that's provided to shuffle all of the tiles and we draw out of the bag type thing. You kind of give them a, you can give them a good shuffle there. You can gotta give it a good, good shuffle, mix them around and everything, and I can draw out of this bag. So therefore, I don't know if I'm actually gonna draw a um, character tile when I'm filling up the board. So that's one thing that I deviate from the rule book here is I shuffle these ones off the side and I put my tiles inside the bag. I think it makes it for better. You don't see actually drawing out the character tiles. And that's just, that's just a me, that's a me thing. Um, I, I felt that that was a better way of randomizing the actual gameplay uh tiles and oops i just dropped one um on the floor i'm going to make sure that i pick that up later okay so, and of course the drawstring bag is very very nice and the screen printed um so back on it and then we've got a couple of player aids going on here 
Now, you don't get enough player aids for both players. They kind of just give us two player aids. Um, one for the Pyro tokens and one for the character tiles. So we kind of have these off to the side, and you kind of just like pick it up, and you kind of look and look at it and everything. Um, yeah, and then on the backs of them, here's a distribution of the tiles, so you kind of know what's inside the game and what, what has been drawn, what has not been drawn. And then at the very end of the game, you can flip over the character tiles one for, and there's the scoreboard. And kind of reminds you of how to score um, different, uh, different, different goods. And then lastly is the actual game board in which you lay out all of your tiles. Actually, you can go on. I always do like this when they have the art on the back of the thing. Uh, we got the Sobek godlike figure here, and here is all the people bringing all of the different goods to him. All, all across the way but of course we're not playing on that side we're going to be actually playing on this side of the board which is it's, it's very functional very lays out very everything very nicely um and then here are the slots for the pierogue tokens for when you do decide to sell a set and everything um and then there is some reminders on how to fill up the board um, starting in the center, you work your way around, and then you start at this corner, and you work your way around, and then you start in this part corner, and you work your way around. So you start here, one, two, three. Very nice little reminder. Um, so, um, and yeah, those are the components to uh, to Sobek. Um, really solid production. Really, really solid production for the price point that they're actually offering this game. So, um, no qualms about that so i am now going to go get everything set up to play this game and so join me in a little bit here and i'll teach you how to play sobek okay well i'm all set up here for a two-player game of well sobek two players i guess you can only play this with two players and yeah so a little bit of setup has occurred so we shuffled all the pirogue tokens and we've only selected five of them to randomly to put into the middle of the for the game we have dealt out two starting tiles each to each of our players and then four of the starting tiles have been placed in the center here and you can see that those ones were the gray backs and then everything else around the board starting in this spot i was filling from drawing from my bag and i filled in these spots and then once all those spots are filled, then I start in this corner and I filled in all of their spots too. Now it's important to note that whenever a character tile is drawn or selected from the pile or from the bag, however you're deciding to do it, um, they are placed face down so that you actually have no idea which character you're going to get. Uh, FYI, you're going to want to get some characters in this game because they are pretty good. Um, and, and, and helping you along with collecting your sets and whatnots. Um, so yeah, in, in, in essence, this is going to be a set collecting game where we're going to want to try to collect sets of like goods um, and then be able to take an action in order to sell them. So yeah, there are essentially there's three actions that you can do on, uh, on, on your turn. You're going to only do one action every time that it gets around to you um the first main action is going to be to select a tile from this from this board now i can't just select any tile around here um at the very start of the game the very first tile that needs to be um selected whoever you determine to be the start player like we decided this person was going to be the start player um the very first tile of the game must be one of the four center goods tiles and now there is a little bit of strategy that you have to um, uh, think about when you do select your particular tile. Because you'll notice that most tiles, let's take a look at this tile right here, this fish tile, that it actually has these dark brown spots along the edges on these two sides. And that is because, let's just say this player decides, oh, well, maybe they're going to go, maybe we'll go with this one right here. Um, Let's say the first player decides that they want to take some wheat. And if they take some wheat, but only because I see that they already have some wheat, so maybe collecting a little bit more is going to be helpful. They select this one. Now notice that this one has the dark browns on the top and the bottom. 
That is the way when I select this, the onc token is going to go in that spot and it's going to be oriented, in this case, up and down because that's where those brown spots are. And now when it comes around to the next player's turn, if that next player is going to select a tile, they can only select a tile from this column, which way the onc token is pointing. So they're only allowed to take one of these particular tiles. So when you select a tile, you're essentially setting up who, uh, what tiles the next person is able to draft, which is actually a really neat um, aspect to the drafting mechanism here. Okay, so now it's this person's turn. Now they have some choices. They can take an onk, uh, if they decide to draft a tile, they are allowed to take, well, essentially any of these tiles. Now, the closer to the onk tile that you select from, there is no penalty. So they, they could take these two, one of these two tiles here without any penalty, but anything further away, let's just say this particular person wanted to select this, um, the, this the kind of like this red brick tile here. And notice that they would have to go over this Sobek statue um, tile in order to get that one so they could draft this one they could be able to draft it and notice that this one the dark um the dark outline is on the corner so when they would draft this particular tile the onc token would be placed on a diagonal meaning that now they have, the next person can only draft along this diagonal line i would draft that one but since i skipped over this particular tile that tile also gets removed from the board gets flipped upside down and gets placed on their corruption board. They took a little bit of corruption just to go a little bit ways out of their way to get a tile that they actually um, wanted. And gaining corruption is bad in this game because um, the person with the lowest amount of corruption at the end of the game, they're going to get some rewards. Um, immediately, they get one of these Debden tokens, which is, um, you know, straight up, they're straight up points. But also, they're also going to gain extra Debden tokens um, based on the difference of, of of the number of tiles between the two the two players. So you don't want to have a lot more corruption than the other player because they're going to get a bunch of bonus points. Okay, um, and that's selecting the tiles. Um, you're going to want to select tiles. Of course, you want to create sets of these. Um, tiles, but you also want to click sets that also have these, um, the, the these kind of like these gold, these golden bug, um, these these gold, these golden bug icons on them, because uh, I'll explain how the set scoring happens at the end of the game. But you're going to want to have your sets to have these golden uh, bugs in them. And yes, so play is going to continue going around and around and you're going to collect more. Let's just say, okay, now this person selects this tile. Okay, they go like that. And then now there is no penalty to jumping this space. Like I see this one's on this diagonal here. Um, we can select this tile with no penalty or this tile with no penalty. Um, we're going to select this one, let's just say. Just because I already got some. I'm going to keep, gonna keep this going. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is an interesting situation because we have this tile right here. Um, this player can select this tile. Now they would actually have a choice. I'm going to do it this way, place that so I don't remember. So I remember. Um, we got a choice. We can either keep this tile to collect a set for, or since it has a Debon token uh, icon on it, we can actually discard this tile and just draw the random Debon token from the top. And now we get to add that to our final score at the end of the game. And then play continues. I'm just going to kind of continue patterns until I actually find myself into that. Actually, I get a set here. Uh, keep it going. Oh, you know what? This person is going to take some corruption. And they're going to take themselves a character tile. Now, character tiles, they come with a wide range of abilities, and that is why they have this handy little cheat sheet of what all the different character tiles do in the game. And when you draft a, deb uh, a character tile, you, you can peek at it and see what they see what they do, and you kind of keep that in your little um, area here so that you can use it. Um, but notice that also the character tiles, they don't have... 
They don't have the dark outline around them. That's why. That's because when you draft a character tile, you can orientate the Ankh token in any direction that you wish. So let's just say they were not really paying attention and they decided to orientate the Ankh token in this direction. Now, there are these Sobek statue tiles that are wild cards. They can actually act as any good that you want. And, oh, do you know what? Maybe we're just going to, we're just actually just going to take this tile right here right now. And then these guys, they're going to take this tile. And now, finally, we actually have the opportunity to do a, another action that's not drafting a tile. Okay? Um, as soon as you have at least... I say the word at least three of the same good, at least uh, at least three of the same good, you can sell them. Now, I have these kind of face up for the purposes of this video. Actually, all of these tiles would actually be in your hand. Okay, you would actually have all of these tiles would actually be secret from the other player. You kind of have all of these tiles in your hand. And then when you decide you're going to sell, which means you have at least three or more of a certain good and everything you can take an action to not draft a tile but you can sell so selling just means i'm going to place these tiles onto my tableau and now i am committed that i have i'm going to score these at the end of the game and how you score them is you're going to take the number of bug tokens so in this case there'll be one two three four five six bug tokens and you're going to multiply that by the number of tiles in that set so this would be six times three that would be 18 points for this particular player and as soon as you sell a as soon as you sell a set of goods you get to select one of the pro tokens now they're all phased down and as when you get to select, you actually get to peek. You can actually peek at all of them and then decide which one you're actually going to want to um, select. And they do a wide range. So that's why there is another cheat sheet here of all of the different pro tokens. And so you can kind of take a look at. So you're going to get to, as the first person, you're going to get to peek at all those and you're going to get the first selection of one of these. So let's just say, I saw it on here. I think it was, uh, nope, it was this one. I'm going to take this one. It's worth just straight up seven points at the, uh, at, at the end of the game. And I'm going to place that down. I'm going to activate it right away. My opponent now knows I have seven points at the end of the game plus my set. Okay. Um, my opponent then is going to, so I, these are, these ones are in my hand. Uh, my opponent, I'm just going to kind of read over who here. Oh, yes. Now, my opponent says, you know what? I don't really want to select this one of these two tiles in this game. I'm going to take another action. The other action is that you can activate a character ability. And in this case, you can actually activate the character ability so that you flip it over. And we got this one. This one says, oh, I was trying to read it. The high, uh, high Priestess. I can either discard all tiles of a single good type from my corruption board, or I can discard all the Sobek statues from my corruption board. So actually, this person right here is, I can actually play this. Okay. Lay it down. And I can actually just discard. I can actually just discard that one. So now I have no corruption. And now play will pass back over to the other player. And, and now they don't have a set to play down. They don't have any character tiles. They're going to have to dra They're gonna have to keep drafting. And things are going to keep going like this. They're going to keep going around the board. Da -da -da -da. I'm going to take this. And it's going to kind of go over like this. We'll go like that. And then we'll select this one. And they decide to do that. Now, let's just say here, I don't have a set to play, or sorry, they don't have a set to play. They don't want to play their character tile just yet. They want to select a tile, but look at where the Ankh token is pointing. It's not pointing at any tiles that they can draft. So this is a unique opportunity in the game where it says, hey, I want to draft a tile, but there's no tile to draft. We are going to remove the Ankh token from the board, and now we're going to go back to that pile of tiles that we haven't used yet, and we're going to refill the board. And how you refill the board? Well, you refill the board exactly how you filled the board in the beginning of the game. You start at this position, and you fill around, and then you go to the next position, and you fill around, 
And you finally go to the last position and you fill a round. Okay, so I'm going to kind of just do that right now here. I'm going to kind of go you know, right there. And notice that all the tiles have to be oriented, orientated, oriented in the same direction. That's because it matters where the um, up and downs, left and rights, corner diagonal um, um, blocks dictating where those, where that on token needs to be um, pointing. So I'm just going to just keep going here. Just going to keep filling this in. Everything there's a there's a character tile. I get placed face down. I'm gonna fill in this spot over here. It looks like another character tile. I'm gonna keep going around. Draw another one right there. And it looks like I got three more to go here. Look at that another character tile. Oh my gosh. There we go. Whoops. That one shouldn't have went face down. Look at that. There's a few tiles left in the bag. And so now the person whose turn it was. Now they have to draft their tile. And where do they draft their tile? Well, like at the beginning of the game, they have to draft one of the four center tiles in order to keep this going. So let's just say, you know what? They're going to end up taking, they're going to take this wild tile and, and orientate it. And we keep wash, rinsing, and repeating as we're going to be setting down these sets of goods. We are going to be... Um, playing down their character tiles and everything is going to go all hunky dory until one of four things happens. I'm going to grab my rule book here because I always have to refer to this for some odd reason. We're going to keep going that at the beginning of your turn, if the onk if the onk token is pointing to empty squares, there are no more tiles to draw to fill you have no sets that you can play and you have no characters tiles that you can play if all four of those things happen the game immediately ends and i repeat it immediately ends the other person does not get a chance to rebuttal or anything like that all right so once those old things happen then we go to the game end and we start doing corruption. So the player who did not end the game, if they still had any sets remaining in their hands, they actually have to discard them. They get to discard them, but they don't get any points for them. That's rough. Now, any tiles that are still in your hand, any tiles that are still in your hand that you then that you didn't get to play down or anything like that, they all get stacked up. They all get stacked up, and they get added to your. Well, they get added to your corruption board. So if you couldn't play them, they all get. Uh, if there was a set, they would have got discarded. But anything that did not get played then gets put into the corruption spot and then you get to compare corruption so let's just say i just want i just want to make a situation here let's just say that this was the this was the corruption status um at the end of the game um this player has two tiles and this player has one two three four five tiles in it this person has least amount of corruption they automatically get a debon token and now you see how much less corruption do they have this was a difference of what was this five to two that is a difference of at least three for every three difference this person gets another debon token so in this case there was a difference of three they got another one if there was a difference of six they would get two if there was a difference of nine they would get three so you kind of don't want them to get out of hand here and yeah, and then you start adding up all your points. You flip over to the one, you flip over to the one board here and you grab those little point track tokens and then you start adding up the final score. You take all of your sets where you multiply the number of bugs times the number of tiles in your set. You count up any points you would have got from Pirog tokens. You count up any points you have from Devon tokens. And whoever has the most points will win Sobek two players.
I think I did a pretty decent job of kind of outlining all the main things that are going on in this game. Um, I think I don't, I don't, I don't think I mentioned that once you lay down a set, like say of three bricks here, you can add to this set. But when I add to that set, you need to add at least three more bricks at that time. You need to, act, when you sell a set, you actually have to have always at minimum three tiles to play down. So I could actually have another three bricks in my hand and I can add it to this, um, to this, to this line. So, all right, join me back at the studio and I'm going to give you my final thoughts about Sobek two players. All right, let me give you some of my thoughts about Sobek two players. Now I'm going to keep prefacing lots of these videos that my wife and I we do play a lot, and I mean a lot of these two-player only small box style of games. So I was very excited when you know Pandasaurus Games is coming out with a two-player only game that I had actually known nothing about. I, I saw the amazing artwork, saw that it was designed by Bruno Cathala, was one of the co-designers on it, immediately had me intrigued about what this game could possibly offer. Production quality, you know, top notch. Talk a lot, so we took a look at the components, very minimalistic, but very beautiful artwork. I, I really enjoyed the cartoony nature of the goods and everything that, how it's depicted. The the theme and the world, how it all kind of blended all nicely together. Really enjoyed that thing. Now it's a two player only tile drafting and set collecting game. And that kind of is our jam. We do like doing all of those different things. So what made this one seem a little bit um, different than all those others? Because we've got drafting games, we've got set collecting games. Um, and the way that this one does it a little bit differently is the fact that all of the tiles are laid out in this big square grid and all the tiles have those markings on them so that when I draft a tile, I have to place down that onk token and that onk token is going to tell my opponent, in this case, my wife, what tile she's allowed to take or sorry, which tiles she has to select from. So I can select a tile that I want and at the same time, hopefully point her towards tiles that she may not want or those tiles are far away enough from the Octogen that she would actually have to end up taking corruption in order to take what she actually needs to complete her um, sets, which is another really neat aspect of the kind of the, the what I kind of attribute to a really decent and good two player game experience is that there's got to be a lot of like push and pull, give and take type of thing and that is where the 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 corruption tokens can uh sorry the corruption board and being able to fill that up by taking good tiles away that's a little bit of the give and take here and uh, i think it's done extremely well because there was a there was a game that i was collecting really nice sets of all of my goods getting the nice high getting the getting lots of the golden bugs to multiply my all my tiles but i was taking lots of corruption at the same time and didn't realize that I had so much corruption compared to my wife that she ended up getting, I think, well, she ended up getting the bonus Debon token for having the least. And I think she even got like two more Debon tokens and they range in value from like three points all the way up to nine points. And I think the ones that she ended up getting from that, I think were some of the higher point values that made up that big difference in in the end of a uh, game scoring. So I really enjoyed the, um, you get to tell your opponent uh, which row, column, diagonal that they get to select from. And if they choose far away from the Onk token, corruptions abound. So really really enjoyed that type i haven't i haven't seen we don't really see that often in these two player games that where my decision uh directly affects what my opponent can uh do like we play games where you can block your opponent from doing something um but nothing that actually where my decision actually affects what you actually have to do um really enjoyed that piece of the thing. 
uh, the corruption. Again, nice balancing mechanic of, hey, I can collect whatever tiles I want, but I might be able to take that corruption. I'm going to give my opponent some bonus points at the end of the game. Now let's talk about the end of the game because that was the part that I always found that that I kind of found the most confusing and I need to have now we've played this one. Oh gosh how many times have we played it I want to say we've played it at least like six or seven times at this point and I <laughs> for some odd reason I still have to turn to what is it here in uh, page 11 in the rule book to outline exactly what is happening at the end of the game first off I gotta ch always double check Okay, what's the checklist of things that need to occur for the game to end? Um, there are four things that need to happen in order for something not to, for the game to end on my particular turn. What are they? Oh, yeah. The Ong tokens pointing at empty squares. There's no tiles left to draw from to fill empty squares. Um, you don't have any sets that you can play onto the table, and you don't have any characters left. So, literally, you can't do anything on your turn. I, I, I guess that. If, I don't know why that was so hard for me to internalize that if you have absolutely nothing to do on your turn and there's no tiles to fill the board, the game is going to end. And I have to get just get that around my head. I had to remind myself that. Then I always have to remind myself about the corruption rules at the end of the game, because there is there is the tricky thing that I think it could have been worded a little bit better in the rule book, where um, the person who ends the game, so there is no valid sets for them to play, no character tiles, anything like that. The game immediately lands. The opponent, if they still had sets left in their hand, those sets get discarded. I totally keep missing that one that, hey, if my opponent still had sets in there, but the game is end, they have to discard them. And then any tiles that are left in our hands, all of them go into the corruption. And then we do the corruption count. I don't know why I get that confused every single time. I always have to have my little booklet here, page 11 in the rule book, if you want to keep tabs, reminds me of how to do that. So, and then the end of game scoring is really, really quite nifty. It's just a simple multiplication and addition of all your little bonus things that you have going along the line. Um, so, yeah. Oh, okay. I got a lot out there. Um, lots of things that I liked. Um, that end of game thing could have been a little bit clearer. Do we recommend this as a two-player experience um, game? And do you know what? It actually does fit nicely into our collection. I'm just going to grab the side of the box here because I wanted the, they are advertising a 20-minute playtime, and that is pretty much spot on. I would say our games probably take a little bit closer to the half an hour mark, um, and that's probably a me problem because I have a lot of analysis paralysis and I always have to think about my turns a lot. <laughs> so I want to say that most of our gameplays are probably more, it's probably right about that 20 minute mark. That's not including that you're going to be like, you know, constantly drawing tiles and filling up this board in a very particular pattern. <laughs> okay. That was another thing that I had a problem with in this rule book. I got to actually read, I got to find this okay, because they say the, place the debon tokens into the nice orange bag that you get in this game you put this is where you put the debon tokens to kind of keep them randomized but you're shuffling all of the tiles to create the stack that you're going to draw from but the, here's the deal uh, that, that the character tiles are a completely different color and back to the um uh the goods tiles so in that stack, I know where the character tiles are. That's very, for so I don't know. This might be just a me thing, but I find that extremely hard to shuffle because as I'm shuffling the tiles and mixing them up and stacking them together, I can't help but notice that these character tiles are there and for some odd reason i'm trying to subconsciously like you know maybe try to space out the character tiles i don't want them too close together i don't want a whole bunch of them in a row i want them nicely evenly distributed um but i can i can actually physically see that so that is why i made the conscious effort that i put the tiles into this bag and i shuffle the debon tokens onto the table and stack them up um i found that that's easier now granted 
this is a much smaller bag than what you need in order to shuffle tiles properly inside of this bag. So my solution might not be complete. I might even just try doing, or we've tried just putting them into the box lid, shuffling in and just kind of sh shake them around and everything like that, hold it above us and kind of draw that draw that way. But I think being able to draw the tiles so that you can, or just, they could have just made the backs just the same. Like, well, I guess that would have been that. No, I couldn't. No, that couldn't have worked because you. There is some strategy. Like, hey, that is a character. That is a character tile that I kind of want. So maybe they could have actually just made them kind of like the same color, but maybe just a different icon in the middle to to, to depict that it's a, um, to depict that it's a character tile to keep it face down but maybe kept them as like that dark charcoal color so that it's not as blatant when i'm shuffling it's not as blatant just that what that when i'm shuffling them that i know which one's a character and that's probably a me thing but it really really annoyed me that um that they were completely different colors so that when i was trying to shuffle so that's probably the most nitpickiest thing that I'm probably going to say. Other than we didn't get two sets of player aids for um, for re referencing the pierogue tokens and the character tiles. Um, that kind of annoyed me um, as well. These probably could have been really nicely summarized cards um, that each player could get or just give us an extra set of these so that I can have so that my wife and I or my partner and I cannot just no, not we're not completely always sharing these ones and everything like that because it kind of tells what we're kind of going towards, especially the character tiles. So I I don't know. I'm, I'm nitpicking at the components ways that way. Gameplay. This is very, very fun. Um, it's a great way to kill an evening right before bed or right before supper or even just a right after supper type of thing. It's a really, really good on that fact this is probably going to rank pr oh, nice. i'm going to talk about rank because i got a whole stack if you go into my twitter account you see i have posted a picture of a big stack of two-player only games and i'm kind of trying to figure out where does this one fit because spoiler alert here here's where my final thoughts are coming in we really liked this one it's fast it's got a lot of that give and take turns are relatively quick if you don't have analysis paralysis um yeah and it's just got like that that unique thing about hey what i do is going to affect my opponent's um choices on their turn that's really kind of really 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 quite quite neat so those are my thoughts about Sobek 2 players. Leave a comment on this video. Are you intrigued by this game as well as much as I am? Um, or have you actually played it? What are your thoughts about Sobek 2 players? Pandasaurus Games is creating some very top quality games lately. I just um, I just reviewed Skull Canyon Ski Fest not too long ago. Um, got another fantastic production they're really got a solid lineup of games with pretty neat themes coming out lately all right i've been ryan from mr l's gaming rants and reviews if you're liking the content that i'm producing on this show please consider subscribing to the channel it's going to really really help me out uh, hit the notification bell so that you get notified when my new videos do release um and yeah comment Tell me, like this video. Tell me what you think about Sobek 2 players. All right, I think I'm good. I am going to officially close out this video saying that this review is officially over. <laughs>